Hey everybody, this is Ryan and we'll be looking at Programming in Minecraft Education Edition. This lesson will teach basic programming concepts through visual and object-oriented means. Minecraft and Code Connect will be utilized, along with the language Microsoft Make Code. Students will be placed in small groups of two to three, not so many so that students should be able to see the screen. And hopefully multiplayer LAN capabilities will be available so that the students can collaborate within the game world. This is intended for ages 12 and up, but it could also be a good primer in programming for adults. Students will learn programming concepts such as sequential processing, iteration and recursion, variables, loops, functions, how to code efficiently, how to debug their code, and also automation and scalability. When it comes to the constructivist elements, the lesson will allow students to create their own knowledge, collaborate, actively learn by being immersed in the game world and hopefully fostering some sort of curiosity. They'll be challenged by problem-based learning by doing and everything will be scaffolded as we'll gradually build up in difficulty as the lesson goes on. So let's go ahead and just jump into Minecraft. Um, as you can see here, here's my world with all of my failed experiments and below me is my robot agent. So the first thing we want to teach the students to do is to get acquainted with the world as well as uh, control their little robot agent here. So the first command we have over in make code is a chat command called TP. And when you type TP in the chat, it's going to teleport their robot agent to the player. And the way you do that is you go into chat command, you just drag that over, then you go to agent and you just say agent teleport to player. And when you type in the command uh, jump, it'll teleport the player. I already have the command TP, so I'm just going to right click and delete that. So if we press T, it'll open up the chat, and then we can type in TP. He disappears, and voila, he's right behind us. Some other commands we need to teach them is uh, the move command. And so with the move command, uh, the agent will move forward by one. You just go to the agent tab, and you can find all of these commands. And you can just keep dragging these different chat commands onto the screen. We also have um, agent turn left and agent turn right. So once they, this is the first step to getting them acquainted with Minecraft, is that they need to get their, their agent um, moving how they want him to. So we can type in move, and he'll move forward one. Type in R, type in L, and that will orient the robot. The next thing we want to teach the students to do is create a loop. So as you can see over here, I have a move to command and I've dropped a loop in here with the same agent move forward command that we had from before on this first move one. So to create a loop you just go to loops, repeat four times, drop this over, and you can drop items in here and change this number to one or two or how 12, how many times you want to run the loop. So what we do is once they've got that created we issue the command move to and it moves the agent forward four times. So once they've mastered moving their agent, the robot around in the Minecraft world, um, we'll want to have them actually start building something. So if we look at this chat command, build one, uh, it has the agent destroying the obstacles. So if he walks into any blocks, it'll destroy those blocks. And it also has the agent place um, blocks on move, set to true. Inside, after those two items are set, we'll have a loop that occurs twice and we'll have the agent move five blocks, turn right, move another five blocks, turn right, another, another five blocks, you see the picture. We're making a square, essentially. And once we get to the end, we're gonna go up one block, and then we're gonna turn right, so that we can repeat the pot process a second time. So let's see how that plays out in the game world. So come over here, go to the chat, type in build one, and he's off the races. And we can kind of fly around, there you go. So you can see he's blowing through um, other blocks and he just continues on his way for the second story. And he's all done. After the students have mastered some simple object building, we'll want to have them start incorporating variables into their code. As you can see with this new command, build2, we're setting three variables at the beginning of the program and then incorporating those variables in place of the numbers in the previous piece of code. So for instance, building height equals two, repeat building height times. So it's gonna repeat this loop twice. Set length to five, 
instead of actually putting five there, as you can see, you drop the variable in. It's going to take whatever you set that variable to at the beginning of the program. So let's see how this plays out. It should be exactly the same. Go two, and there he goes. The last core concept we want to introduce to the, to the students before they work independently is functions. So functions are basically modular code. So we can take the whole, um, all the commands in build2 here, and we can create a function out of it. And the way you do that is you go to functions, you make a function, we'll call it test. We may have to zoom out here. There it is. Zoom back in. And what you do, we can duplicate the chat command. Click and drag on that. Drop it into the function. And now we have function test. Now if we want to call that function, we create another chat command. In this case, it's called jump. Go down to functions, call function test, drop it there. Go into the game world, type in jump, because that's the chat command. That's going to call function test. Hit it, and it's going to do the same thing that we saw the last two or three times. It's just a more efficient way of grouping your code together and um, making more complex code by making your, your previous uh, code modular. So now that the students have all the building blocks, I would ask them to uh, construct a bridge using multiple supports and having a flat top. And so on the screen, you can see here the chat command go. This is the actual uh, code that's going to build the bridge, but it has several subordinate functions. So we see build support, build next support, uh, build bridge top, and then it also has subordinate functions of build top length left and length right. And they're all going to work together to uh, build this bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the game world and show you that, but I'll do it in time, la time lapse so we don't waste too much time. So I think Minecraft can be a really uh, visually stimulating tool that makes programming fun, uh, but as well as uh, provides an environment for deep understanding. Um, it's a lot of uh, a lot of fun to kind of play around. As you can see in this world, I, you know, built a whole lot of failed experiments. But once you get it right, it's it's really motivating. And I think um, Minecraft supports a lot of the constructivist um, methodology that we've been studying this week. So thanks for viewing. I hope it was informative.